a motion offense team, Ravi. Maybe 50% of the game today. Hard screens, pairs on both sides of the floor, will knock you around defensively. Holy field three, no good, and Kentucky controls. DJ Montgomery to the free throw line, that shot is off. Davide Moretti is the sharpshooter on this team, along with Tyler Edwards. That one is picked by Hagens. And in for the layup, and he missed it. And he can't believe it. Moretti passed to a wide open underneath the basket. Terrence Shannon Jr., what a quick turnaround that was. Yeah, one of those plays now after Kentucky. You just have to play through it. Ashton Hagens is going to make that play. 99.5 times out of 100. Just got a little off balance with the last step. Already didn't at all attempt to block the shot. Maybe that surprised him. They're going to set a lot of high screens with Richards. See if they switch on it. This is a defense that switches often. Quickly, his second shot, no good. Richards thrown out of the way. And the Raiders with a rebound. Gang rebounding by Texas Tech to start the ball game. There's the first block for Nick Richards. Maxi the run out to the hole, lays it up and in, and he's fouled. Power guard, Ravi, by Kentucky. Maxi Hagens, strong kids, man, that can play through contact and just knock defenders out of the way. And the block by Nick Richards, that's the link that you're going to have to deal with all evening long if you're Texas Tech. Nick Richards just goes straight up inside the restricted arc to take away an automatic two by Shannon, and it's Maxi ripping and running to the free throw line. Nick Richards, about two and a half blocks a game. He leads the team in scoring blocks, rebound, and field goal percentage. And Maxie, the Texas native, the only Texas native on this team, he's from down near Fort Worth. Got a lot of friends and family in the crowd here at Texas Tech. Maxie has been big for Kentucky in big games. You go back to the Michigan State game, the Louisville game, and has the knack to rise up. 
the shot clock. Edwards contested free, but he rattles it in. Tyler Edwards, Big 12 Player of the Week last week when he had 20. Four and 22 in games against K-State and Iowa State. You don't want Edwards to get going if you're Kentucky. He, he's a guy that can go for 25 in this building right now. 36% three-point shooter in Big 12 play. Quickly into the lane, throws it up. But there's Nick Richards cleaning up. Rabbi, the value of Kentucky today to just get the ball up on the rim off of the dribble penetration is so important. Richards Montgomery could play volleyball on this basketball floor. A couple of early offensive rebounds for the Wildcats have led to points. Tough bounce pass from Moretti, but it is controlled and kept inbounds. Good hands underneath from Chris Clark, the Virginia Tech transfer. One on the shot clock for Edwards. That three no good. Kentucky guard so good at coming down on that defensive glass. Actually, tough defense already with the pick from behind, but they're going to get the call on the floor. And, Jimmy, that foul is going to be called against T.J. Holyfield. Uh, Texas Tech is uh, Kyler Edwards. His form is terrific. And you have to crowd him and make him put that ball on the floor. And that's what I'm talking about with Kentucky, Ravi. Just, they get the ball up on the glass today. The length of Kentucky can dominate. By early in a charged atmosphere in which the home crowd wanted a push off on quickly. Maxi fires, no good. Oh, EJ Montgomery had a chance in and out. He goes again, and that time lays it up and in, and you can really see the size advantage for Kentucky. Yeah, and because of that, the black jerseys, Texas Tech, if they don't go hit first in this ball game, Kentucky's going to have a plus 20 rebound advantage. Seven-foot freshman on the bench, Russell Chiwa doesn't play often, but you wonder if this is a game he's going to get into. That can help. Edwards knocks down his second three. I talked about his shooting numbers in Big 12 play. Only 30% on the year from three, but that number's climbing over the last four or five ball games. Tyler Edwards, the sophomore of Arlington, Texas. And here's a steal, the run out, and the dunk! with some noise behind it for Terrence Shannon, Jr. Texas Tech, like Kentucky, Jim will try to turn you over as often as they can. Corner three, no good this time. Another offensive rebound. We'll start again. Maxi uses the screen in and out. Tobias Ramsey went up hard against Richards, lost the ball on the way up, may have gotten Richards' face on the way down. Block on the other end. That time it was Edwards. Clark pushes and avoids the trees. Three, no good. Good three-point shooter, too, is Davide Moretti. Ravi, there will be nothing given around the rim in this ballgame. Both clubs setting the rules, setting the tone of how the game's going to be played. Hard contact, expect collisions at the rim. Deion Brooks Jr. playing really well lately. Much more productive minutes. Kentucky saw Khalil Whitney leave the program this week. We'll talk more about that over the course of this game. And an air ball from Maxi. Crowd loves it as we're tied 10-10 here early. You can hear them saying air ball in the background. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Continental Tire for what you do and in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. Thank you very much and yes, it has been a lot of fun so far. With Jimmy Dykes, Carl Ravitch, the scene outstanding. And they have anticipated this one 
since it was on the schedule. The only Big 12 SEC Challenge game between two ranked teams. The fans lined up, some of them, some of them beginning Thursday. That's the general admission line right there. Those folks right there had wristbands, so they at least knew they'd have a seat in here. And when they got in here, they started bouncing. All of them. And another sellout crowd anticipated 15,000 plus for a team that last year went all the way to the championship game. Taking on a Kentucky team that always brings out the best in other teams' crowds. Seven second chance points. They've out-rebounded them on the offensive glass, five to nothing. Edwards has got a couple of threes for Texas Tech. Get ready for a defensive-minded, sort of knock em, rock em, sock em type game. Clark to a cutter. That block, that shot blocked by Richards and Sestina from behind. They're going to get a foul on Nate Sestina. Nick Richards picks up his second block of the game. Ravi, this is a game. If you if you don't want to fight, then you can't play in this ball game today. I'm talking about for both Chris Beard and John Calipari because the collisions at this rim already have been severe. There's no back down from Texas Tech. There's no back down from Kentucky. Back-to-back -back Saturdays, Kentucky goes into very hostile environments. Last Saturday, Bud Walton Arena, Fayetteville, Arkansas was off the charts. Lubbock just as hot. Absolutely right. This is Chris Clark, the senior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. He, of course, played three years at Virginia Tech, leading the team in rebounds. And Kentucky got off to a fast start, but now Texas Tech leads for the first time, 12-10. A tough man-to-man -to -man defensive team is Texas Tech. They will switch it to one through four, the one through five if they have to. They down the ball on the sides, make it very difficult, Ravi, to reverse the ball. Quickly threw it up. Nick Richards picks up another offensive rebound. He kicks to Johnny Juzang, who's into the game. Look at Richards continue to battle on the glass. Another offensive rebound. Kentucky seventh. Hagens to the hole, and Ashton Hagens gets his first two of the game. You're dealing with, if you're Texas Tech, an energized Nick Richards that's playing as good as any big guy in the country right now. Luca Garza from Iowa's in there as well. Petri Shev when he's healthy at Gonzaga. Nick Richards has really grown this year, Ravi. Well, they let the three-point shot be attempted by Shannon Jr. It wasn't a bad idea. He missed it. He's only taken four three-point field goal attempts in his last eight games. Wide open layup for Ashton Hagens. John Calipari keeping the ball in the middle third of the floor to start the game. Doesn't want to go against Texas Tech's outside defense. Keeps it in the middle. Gets Hagens down the pipe. Ramsey got both Kentucky defenders off their feet. Love Texas Tech to get Nick Richards in foul trouble. He's done such a good job this season, especially lately of staying out of it. Yeah. They're going to get Nick there and a little lazy defense by Nick Richards on the baseline. Yeah, they got him in a bad closeout. Texas Tech did. John Calipari will switch some, and at times you have to drive that mismatch. And Terrence Shannon, number one, who's checking out right now with a very explosive, long first step to gain the angle. Kevin McCullough, number 15, into the game for Texas Tech. Kentucky has used its bench again without Khalil Whitney, who decided to leave the Kentucky program this week. Four on the shot clock turnaround. Tough shot, no good. Ball hits the ground, and Nate Sestina picks it up for the Wildcats. What a lower body box off by Ashton Hagens. He didn't come up with the basketball, but he kept his big guy off. Tremendous leg strength by Ashton Hagens on the defensive end. What in the world? Sort of a shot led to another offensive rebound, and Johnny Juzang knocks it in. Calipari's looking at Hagen's like, what, what, what was that? that? That's the throw it off the rim to Juzang <laughs> play. Coach, we put it in after pregame meal when you left the room. Right. I mean, he wanted the players to coach. That's the play they came <laughs> up with. That's the one they came up with. <laughs> Player-driven play right there. <laughs> this is the point guard, the playmaker for Texas Tech, Chris Clark. Tough pass there, Jimmy. We're having Nick Richards impacting the game early. Plays with tremendous energy now for 28, 30 minutes. Hard to move him away from the restricted arc on either end of the floor. He's active, he's long, he's keeping the balls alive, can set that middle ball screen, and John Calipari says, I'm going to drive it down the pipe to start with. Cal set the tone early for Kentucky.
Isaac Richards, a seven footer for Kentucky, is a star at the two point part of the floor on the offensive glass. And look at his shooting percentage around the rim. How do you guard Nick Richards? You stay in front of the basketball up top. If this offensive player for Kentucky drives down the lane, this defender on Nick Richards now is in a bind. If he comes off to stop the drive, Nick Richards is going to get on that offensive glass. Obviously, if he doesn't come off to stop the drive, Kentucky's shooting layups. That spot right there, Nick Richards in the dunker spot, hard to handle. Texas Tech better be locked in. And Rabbits already showed up in this ball game. Nick Richards again. Any dribble penetration is a play call for Nick Richards to go get the miss. Think about this. Nick Richards right now is getting one offense and rebound every two minutes and 30 seconds so far in this game. Speaking of offensive rebounds, that one was tapped up and in by Kyler Edwards. And he's off to a fast start for Texas Tech. Square him up, stay in front of the ball. We heard it time and time again from Chris Beard to his guys the last two days. Pagans to the hole, hesitates, and good defense. What the Rain Raiders are known for. Yeah, Texas Tech, they run at drivers. Two, three black jerseys expect to be in the path. Montgomery left his feet. We had contact. As Nick Richards gets set to check back in for Kentucky. Head fakes, ball fakes still work. Fundamental parts of the game, and uh, against this type of defense, you have to move that ball. The ball's got to pop Rabby, and you have to move yourself. Standing and guarding yourself in this game on either end will not work. And the energy guy for Texas Tech has yet checked in. My guy, Avery Benson. <laughs> Avery Benson wears number 24. Jimmy usually identifies one player as his guy. Well, so he's, tonight it's Avery. Yeah, well, he's from my hometown, Springdale, Arkansas. Yeah. Watching play in high school, so yeah. he's my guy. He doesn't know he's my guy, but okay. he's my guy. He was the guy in that Louisville game. He yes, sort of he became a cult hero with the 10 points on three of three from three-point land early this season. Uh-oh. Edwards is on fire early. Kyler Edwards carrying them. He's got 10. He can do it. His numbers have grown in Big 12 play from the three-point line. The early threes now are setting him up to do something off the bounce as well. Kentucky better crowd zero in black. Big 12 SEC challenge. Tyrese Maxey baseline, and they threw it away. Kentucky had two players, Sestina and Juzang, in the corner, and instead a turnover. Kyler Edwards is a big shot-making guard that has separation ability. Juzang got just clipped a little bit by the step-back move of Kyler Edwards. Keep your length and impact him at all parts of the floor. Clark working on Sestina. High arcing shot, no good. Great follow there. And it's put back up and in by TJ Holyfield. Followed his own miss. Red Raiders on top. Terrific cut by Holyfield to not get attracted to the rim, Ravi. Got attracted to where the pass was going to be delivered from Clark. Very well read. Off the foot of Hagen's a turnover. Ramsey the run out. Lays it up and in, and a foul. Texas Tech is forcing a turnover on 24.5% of their opponent's possessions, Ravi. That's 11th in the nation. Not only do they force turnovers, they score off turnovers. Big body guards like Kentucky that can bounce defenders off, play through the contact, and get the end one. One of those plays where a coach would say, if you're going to foul, foul. Yeah, yes, don't let that ball get up on the rim. Absolutely, do not let it get up on the rim. Ramsey's free throw. No good. Easier said than done, though, against the strength, the physical strength of guards in this game. Hmm. Weren't with us at the outset of the game. Hagen's had a layup uncontested, which he missed. Oh, there's your guy coming from behind to block Nick Richards, and it sends this place further into a frenzy. Avery Benson says Coach Beard is hired to win games. My job is to help him do his job. And that type of play right there sums up Avery Benson. He's the off-corner defender that comes off of Nick Richards with the hard foul and all over the wrist, <laughs> the hand but action. He did what Juzang didn't do on the other yeah, end. Absolutely right. You're not going to make the basket. Which 
Richards free throw is good. So this appears like it's going to be a great game, and we anticipate this one being really close as well. Number one Baylor on the road in Gainesville against Florida, available on the app so you can watch it anywhere. Part of the Big 12 SEC Challenge presented by Continental Tire. Kansas today just beat Tennessee. We saw that just before us. And as a result, it is the Big 12 with a slight advantage. Texas Tech has been very good in the Big 12 SEC Challenge, 4-2. and two. Kentucky is 3-3. Three and three. Rather, Kentucky, one of the worst three-point shooting teams in terms of the percentage of points they get from three in the country. They make up for it getting at the free throw line, and Chris Beard told his guys, do not let Kentucky stay in this game from the charity strike. Keon Brooks back in number 12 for Kentucky. He's on Clark. Cut by Moretti. Great play by Moretti. He got Emmanuel quickly, a good defender to bite on the ball fake. When Chris Clark is in the middle of the floor, he's a 6'6 point guard. And the back cut off action off of those Chris Clark middle touches, very difficult to defend. Texas Tech known for its defense under Chris Beard. We saw that last year on the way to the finals. And an offensive foul, a charge called. Maxey's on the floor as the Kentucky players go to help him up. Some of the Red Raiders cut in front of him. So the physical type nature of this game we're seeing. And right now a Red Raider is down on the floor. That's Kevin McCullough who is hurt. Grabs the back of his head. Maxey is back up for Kentucky. Look at McCullough, sprint to the action, and mm. that, that, well, the back of that head twice, the first fall, and then the, the maxi collision as well. The goal for Texas Tech Ravi in this game is to take a minimum, a minimum of five charges. That's the importance they put on it in their DNA and in this ball game. So McCullough, who fell backwards, had his head hit the hardwood that had Maxi land on him, his head subsequently hit the hardwood again, being tended to by the athletic trainer. Chris Beard starting to walk over to check on his freshman from San Antonio, Texas. Carlos' dad played football here at Texas Tech and, of course, with the Packers in the NFL. Get back up at any time you have a head in injury involved, you're gonna go make sure that yeah. there's nothing serious along the lines of a concussion. I think he was saying he was okay, but that's something that all programs will have looked at. Right, this game has the feel, it's gonna be a long emotional journey today, is the best way to describe it. And those type of games, from a coaching standpoint, you go as deep as your bench as you're comfortable with. Chris Beard telling us he may try to get everybody in the first half because of that long emotional journey that this arena feels right now. There's Clark in the position you love him in, and so does Beard. That one is picked by Quickly. He's ahead of the floor, and he will lay it up and in. Quick hands for Kentucky. And they have three terrific perimeter defenders when you have Maxi Hagens and quickly on the floor at the same time. Yeah, started calling them the triplets earlier this week because they all can defend multiple guard positions. Similar on the offensive end, with the exception of uh, quickly as the shooter right now. But again, the Kentucky guards coming down to rebound on the defensive glass is huge. Higgins quickly. He has been a three-point whiz all season. He buries another, and he's got five straight points. Cats on top. The one guy after Texas Tech you cannot lose in transition. Emmanuel quickly, he runs to that high slot in transition as well as anybody in the SEC. Shooting almost 40% from three-point land. There's your playmaker, Clark. The, the, the floor should open up in the middle for those back cuts when Clark has the ball up top. Five on the shot clock. Hagen's handsy on him. Edwards step back. No good, and a good rebound by Richards who pushes. Or the low hand. Look out. Well, well, oh, they had ah. Keon Brooks wide open and he couldn't bring it in. That one worked. Hagen's found Richards. And he came from the dunker spot. Nick Richards out of the dunker spot is a real problem. 
not only in this game, but for the SEC. And again, it's all about a paint punch by Kentucky that sets it up. Kentucky's energy level starting to get hot right now on the defensive end. You can get hot defensively, Ravi, just like you can get hot offensively. The catch right now playing low, low hands, the leading drives, and there's what I'm talking about. The paint punch out of the dunker spot. Nick Richards on top of your head. Crash and get back. So what is Chris Beard trying to get across to his guys? The crash guys right now are 22, 1, and I believe it was 11. And then you got the get back guys. So Chris Beard is saying, what are we doing when we shoot the ball? I want three guys going to the glass, crashing, and two guys are my get back guys. That's the respect he has for Kentucky in their transition game. Out but being control. very clear, Ravi, in the yeah. timeouts, who's doing what? Out of control on that drive, Jimmy, but uh, they're going to get the call on Johnny Juzang. So he would go to the bench. Having been with Kentucky so often this season, you can see their bench expanding a little bit. And Juzang is one of the guys that has been picking up more minutes. So is Keon Brooks. Mentioned that Khalil Whitney decided to leave the Kentucky program earlier this week. Easy layup that time. And Texas Tech back within one. And that's just way too easy off an out-of-bounds under. Texas Tech now goes zone. Kentucky has to cut that zone, punch the gaps off the bounce, and go to work. Look out, Higgins got hit with the body that time. And you really can almost read the mind as you see how many second chance points Kentucky's had. When we get into the lane, good shot or not, contested or not, get it up on that rim, because we have some guys that are going to go get it. Yeah, the, the, the game is won. You go back and grade game films. Who won the battle of the paint? And that's what Kentucky's doing right now. K Kentucky's so good at getting Hagens below the zone anytime against the zone defense and let the playmaker attack from behind. Hagens tucking in his shirt. Given your excellence with the whiteboard and the iPad, did they consider you to do some drawing for them? <laughs> whiteboard may be a little better than the iPad. I'll say this about Ashton Hagens. John Calipari said he's the best point guard in the country. I think he's in the conversation right there along with Peyton Pritchard and Tyrese Halliburton from Iowa State. NBA Saturday primetime matchup. Look out, LeBron in the Western Conference leading the Lakers. They finish up a five-game roadie in Philly. They'll get Simmons and the Sixers. Look forward to that. Saturday night, the jump kicks things off at 8. should say tips things off, given the NBA. That's 5 Pacific, ABC, the ESPN app. Hagens gets it to go. Hagens leads Kentucky right now drawing 5.8 fouls per 40 minutes. Starting five back on the floor for Kentucky. Matchup right now, Maxi and Ramsey, those two played against each other in high school. Richards daring Shannon Jr. to shoot. He steps a few feet closer and hits nylon. I love what Shannon did though. He took up the slack that Richards gave him. Didn't drive into the body, but took up the slack. Maxie Ramsey. Higgins drives and a kick. And uh, we got our second charge. That one uh, late call, but on Ashton Higgins. You have to play off two feet if you're Kentucky in this ball game. And you have to go straight up and down on the stop. And Hagens goes off at two feet, goes straight up. That is not a charge. That is, that is not enough contact, Ravi, for that defender to be falling to the ground. Texas Tech, they're great at taking charges. They're also very good at selling charges. Trying to regain the lead. The crowd keeps imploring Shannon to shoot. Richards is talking to him as well on defense. And now he takes him to the hole. And a goaltending call. Richards got that off the backboard. And back-to-back -back buckets for Shannon, and he talks to Nick Richards on the way back up the floor. I mentioned the big explosive first step of Terrence Shannon about four minutes in. He covers a lot of ground now for a 6'6 freshman. That was not a high school drive. That was a Big 12 drive by Terrence Shannon. To be a test for Richards because obviously Texas Tech would love to see him get in foul trouble, get under his skin, get him out of the game. Maxie could move. The hanger no good. How about that box out too on Richards by Shannon Jr. again. Yeah, Shannon Jr. went and made, was the first one to hit.
Bauer, kick. This time he launches a three. No good. No foul called. Quickly penetrates and the teardrop goes. Emmanuel quickly now has got 10. All three of those Kentucky guards are so good at that full speed floater and finishing off a power drive with a finesse float. It is not an easy shot to make. Kentucky very good at it. Davide Moretti. Pretty move. Can't get it to go. Shannon had it and lost it. Find the backside of the, of the play right now for Kentucky. Fagans to Richards to quickly. Maxi. Contact, no. Richards there for the offensive rebound and a putback. Wrapping it all started with Kentucky finding the backside of the play. It took them two passes to get there, but once the ball got to the far third, it opened up that baseline drive. Nick Richards zeroing in already on a double-double. And in conference play, he's averaged nearly a double-double with his points and nine rebounds. Shannon offensive. Jr., yes, he extended that left arm, the offensive foul. You know how hard it is for a seven-footer to get down in the stance and move his feet. Nick Richards did it, 31-28. We'll take a timeout with 3.03 to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Energy on the go. And in part by Boost Mobile. Switch now and get unlimited gigs for the whole family. The switch that gives you more, like this game, giving us plenty. Back after this. At home, Ravi, Jimmy, back to you guys. All right, Allison, thanks. Look forward to the halftime report coming up. And it is a tough place to play, and it's always been a tough team to play against once Chris Beard took over the reins. And Richards has eight points, eight rebounds, quickly to the hole, met at the rim, and denied. And that is the freshman, Russell Chiwa, the seven-footer. Three-pointer on the other end, no good. And the rebound, Montgomery, but what an impact that Chiwa makes as he comes in, the freshman from Cameroon, who went to prep school in Connecticut. Because Cal went empty corner offense out of the timeout. Quickly gets sped up off the closeout. An empty corner offensive play by Cal, which all you're doing is setting up one of your best drivers to get to the paint. And the attack, but Chiwa says, not on my watch. This is a big body kid now, 54 in black, that could have viable minutes in this game to bang with the Kentucky Bigs on the inside. Seven foot 260. Clark bounce pass to him. Sometimes you see somebody miss a shot and then get a little hesitant to take the next one. Benson did that. Chiwa, look hey out! A hey block now. and a two-point shot. <laughs> hey now! And the crowd loves it. No hesitation on that shot from Russell Chiwa. If you flinch in this game as a player or as a team, you will have about a 6-8-0 run put on you in a heartbeat. a freshman does not get many minutes per game but you can see what a body like that does in a game like this well, Nick Richards coming back in who has been the tone setter for Kentucky and just watch how he moved his feet on the last but tremendous by a seven footer to keep his feet alive not get his feet too far outside of his shoulders watch the response though afterwards to the crowd saying bring it on and that's what Nick Richards has grown into under John Calipari the last couple of years. Chiwa with the reverse, and a superstar is born today. Calipari keeping that ball in the middle part of the floor. Not going to mess around with that side defensive action by Texas Tech. Can you get downhill from the middle? Higgins. They're going to call him with a carry. And a turnover with 47 to go. It probably played with the ball about one bounce too many instead of just playing low and going. How about the impact on our guy? the game that Russell <laughs> Chiwa has had? So have you switched guys now? 
Well, I, I can have several guys in the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Big sprint up ball screen. He comes with a vengeance now. Everything going the way of Texas Tech. About a three second difference between shot and game clock. Kentucky doing a great job, though, of communicating with their hands the offensive set. And Ashton Higgins doesn't like what he sees, neither does John Calipari. And right now in Lubbock, Texas, it is guns up. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Atmosphere is ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Energy on the go. And in part by Boost Mobile, switch now and get unlimited gigs for the whole family. The switch that gives you more. Speaking of giving you more, how about it? And Russell Chiwa, who averages about a point and a half a game, gets five minutes, has been a big impact in the limited time he's been on the floor here late in the first half. Maxi in trouble gets the floater. What a shot. Tyrese Maxey and they run it out and they'll turn it over and that'll give the ball back to Kentucky with 1.6 to go on the clock. Two or three of those hard floaters Kentucky's made in this first half. Well the foundation for Chris Beard is get in the fight. That's exactly what Chiwa has done in this ball game. Quickly will fire. Oh and it goes in at the half and it'll count. What a play by John Calipari. Took nothing for granted. With 1.6, he got his communication very clear and clean to his guys. What a play. Yep. Emmanuel quickly, quickly has 13 in the first half. Watch him cut off this right here, Rabbi. He's just going to circle cut right here. And Texas Tech falls asleep with 1.6 to go. A good, clean look. The screen, the action. To keep going to your left and bring it back to your right off of one bounce, very hard to do. The reaction for Kentucky, bam, I'm telling you, those kind of shots going into a half, remember this with about 15 seconds to go in the game. I will. 36-34, 13 for quickly. What a first half we had. It's been a great day of college basketball. We'll send it to our halftime report, Allison Williams. Welcome back, everyone, to the Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Big 12 SEC Challenge presented by Continental Tire. And boy, at the half, Emmanuel quickly playing with as much confidence as anyone in the country. Knocks down a buzzer beater, halftime three. Yeah, it all starts with quickly right here, Rabbi. He's going to act like he's going to screen, but the entire time he knows he's going to come on a scoring cut, a basket cut, and Emmanuel quickly sells it. His defender kind of backs off, and bam, here he comes, man. It's a speed cut. Again, going to his left to get the ball back on the right side, the shot side of his body. Very well executed by Kentucky. To be able to communicate with your guys when the building's loud like that, just to get them lined up and then have some type of action, very well done by Kentucky. Nick Richards looked like he was looking for somebody to screen. Yes, there was, he was. nobody there yeah. with him. Chiwa came in late, made a big impact. I'm sure there are people at home saying, is he going to play more? And Nick Richards didn't have the huge statistics, but boy, did he feel like a dominant figure. He had eight points. He had eight rebounds. And our booking.com game track, eight offensive rebounds. They had 11 second chance points. Texas Tech had six. Quickly ends up with 13. And 18 of the 34 come in the paint. For all the great defense, both teams shooting pretty well. Yeah, and Nick Richards is a great story in terms of sticking with it and staying on his own timeline. He has probably had the ball in his hands less than 2% of the time in this game. But it's what he does without the ball, Rabbi, his energy, his activity level, knowing what he's supposed to do, the hard cuts to the rim, climbing on the glass. He's got three blocks as well, has dominated the game without even close to dominating the basketball. Fantastic first half, and here, the final 20 minutes. block on Maxi. And again, the two kids have played against each other in high school, going against each other. Jemias Ramsey's had a super freshman season, averaging about 16 a game. Struggled against TCU, kind of a shocking loss, the way they lost Texas Tech in their last game against TCU. Holyfield, three on the shot clock. Backdoor yeah. cut, a nice play 
And that sets up Ramsey for a lay-in. They are so good, Texas Tech, at not fighting pressure with pressure. They don't chase the basketball. They back cut the pressure about as well as they have anyone in this Big 12. B.J. Montgomery, pretty good outside shooter. He dumps it into Mon should say Richards, and he got fouled, and he will shoot two. Chris Beard all day yesterday would stop practice at random times and say, anytime the guy guarding you is watching the ball, make sure we have that middle part of the floor opened up and back cut, back cut, back cut. There's a hard wrap and a hard cut by Chris Beard's offense. And man, what a slugfest going down right now in Lubbock, Texas. Richards a 73% free throw shooter. That one halfway down, rattles out. I think when you come up with a concept of a conference versus conference challenge, this is the type of game you want to play. And both these coaches sort of embrace the concept of playing this game. What's happening down here on the right side below the basket? Uh, what's, what is that all about? Is that the bathrobe look? I don't, I don't Just rolled out of the rack know, look, I, let's go to a game. So we got to see that the entire second half. <laughs> Well, Nick Rich has been such a good switch out defender in this game. He comes out as a seven footer and plays low. Ramsey three, too long, great box out. Leads to a quickly rebound. Blow by, kick to Montgomery, and he got hacked. It's amazing. As soon as you blow by one defender, you can see the eyes of the guards light up because we're going to uh, either have a layup or a dunk. So Montgomery goes to the line. We have a chance to remind everybody Sports Center tonight after the X Games in Aspen. John Anderson, Kenny Maine. Highlights and reaction from Philadelphia. That's where LeBron is trying to pass Kobe for third place on the all time scoring list. Tiger trying to move past Sam Snead in the all time win list. Had a good start to his third round at Torrey Pines. We'll show you how it finished up. And inside Roy Williams and Bob Huggins coaching milestones. Kind of a milestone edition of Sports Center tonight after X Games Aspen. How about Roy Williams from North Carolina flying to Lubbock two weeks ago to watch Chris Beard's practice after they lost to Clemson? Came here and said, coaches, let me come and watch. And we'll exchange basketball thoughts afterwards. And that's how far Chris Beard has grown as a coach in this program when Roy Williams on a day off says, I'm coming to Lubbock to study you. Really cool. And how about yes. that defense there by Nick Richards? Didn't leave his feet, stuck his hands up, picked up another block. A double drag by Kentucky in transition, and then the, the five screens to the four, and they go to the post up. Richards misses. We got number one Baylor in Florida coming up as soon as we are done here. 8 o'clock Eastern time from Gainesville. Moretti couldn't get on track in the first half, and he forced that one up. Ball loose, and Montgomery comes away with it. Quickly open three. That's wow. automatic right now. And that is as good as you can run a transition break where the numbers were actually even. Rabbi again, anytime the ball finds the back side of the of the floor in transition, tremendous things happen for your offense. Great pass from Maxi two to find him. The core four of Kentucky have been outstanding again in the air and a foul. Hagens, Maxi, Richards, and Quickly. Those are the core four of this they, team, and they have statistically dominated. Yeah, watch the speed of Kentucky's break. One bounce, two bounces, and to flood the floor on the back side of the play is so good by Kentucky. They got that ball from one third to the other third, back to the original third in about three seconds. That was beautiful transition basketball. Well, Perry says about Quickly, in a lot of ways, he reminds him of Guys like Tyler Hero, and not because he's a pure shooter like Hero, but he lives in yeah. the gym and okay. loves being in the gym. And he has seen his stock skyrocket. Now you think about it, you don't only have guys that have played a year, but you have guys whose stock and abilities have gone through the roof in Hagen yeah. quickly. I, I talked about, I believe, Tuesday night. Th th those are the kind of guys that they, they have not conned themselves and tricked themselves yeah. and not have honest self-evaluations with themselves. If you're going to grow as a player, you have to be truth tellers between you and the coach and you and yourself, and those kids have been. Richards, too. I mean, all three have taken huge strides. Nate Sestina had zeros in his stat line in the first half. He comes in, and the Bucknell grad transfer knocks down a jumper. Which is really concerning why Khalil Whitney would walk away from his team at this part of the season. What is to be gained? You just wonder, in those situations, Ravi, who is in the ear 
of the young man. Well, in the year right now, it's going to be Chris Beard. Yes, he Boy, will. Kentucky's fast break today has been outstanding as Nick Richards, the recipient of the Hagen's assist. And he slammed it through. He's just a couple of rebounds. In fact, one rebound shy of a double-double again. If Nick Richards outruns your big for the 30 minutes that he's in the game, you are in trouble. Nick Richards keeping up with the guards. Four in white. Big Blue Nation. Go Cats! ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Energy on the go. And in part by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Shout out to the Texas Tech dance team that was in there watching as we were doing our whiteboard before the ball game. No, we weren't doing anything. You were in there. So you felt all that pressure. It was a, a ton of pressure. Chris Beard comes out of the timeout and opens up the middle part of the floor, trying to get a back cut or a downhill drive. Got the freshman again, the big fella, Russell Chiwa, back in the game. He was also on the floor chasing Nick Richards just before that last break in which Richard ended up with a dunk. Red, he's got nowhere to go, and look at Hagen's defense, and that right. is a shot clock violation. How fast are his hands? Talking about Ashton Hagen's. He plays low, and his hands play lower around that basketball. And a frustrating game for Davide Moretti. He's on the floor with four points. He's taken six shots. He's two of six. And this season, he averages around 13 a game. Maxi sees the baseline, lost it on the way up. We're going to get a foul called. And the crowd, of course, didn't agree with that. Chua thought he had a Chublaka. <laughs> Instead of foul call, Kentucky with uh, running their smack offensive press break where they're just smacking the backcourt with a, with a ball screen. And I, I, Ty Wright, he lost the ball going up. He did. He did, but I appreciate and I'm sure that uh, Disney does as well, your Chublaka reference. <laughs> I thought we handled the Star Wars cross promotion during the game. We did an Auburn over Christmas. You were fabulous with the, with the gingerbread house. Yeah. Yes, that's as good as I've, I've seen or probably will see. But we, we carry it further with Chublaka. It's cute. And he's going to get us a, a sit down, but he has had valuable minutes. Chris Beard not afraid to put him in this game now. Even late into the second half. But a 10-point lead now for Kentucky. 16-13 to go. Sestina trying to play defense, and that didn't work against Clark. Yeah, Chris Clark brought that thing up in the point guard position. Didn't mess around with running offense. Just went to the playmaker automatically on the first push. Kentucky under John Calipari, there's an incredible statistic when they lead by at least 10. We'll give you that as we send you to break. On our next timeout, but let's just say it favors the Wildcats when they get a 10-point lead in the game. Boy, Sestina has his hands full right now, Garden Clark. No good for Ramsey. Good offensive rebound, and oh, on the floor, Terrence Shannon Jr. had a chance, and he forced it out of bounds. Calipari gets a 10-point lead when he's at Kentucky. The team is 274 and seven. 274 and seven. So there's a big challenge here in the Big 12 SEC Challenge for the team that calls Lubbock, Texas home. Go back into the flashback machine, 2018, and Tyrese Maxey and Jemias Ramsey face each other in high school. It does look like Maxey's wearing a Kentucky uniform in the white. That's Ramsey in the red. It was South Garland in Duncanville, South Garland. They won it 61-58. It was the first game of the season, so the two teams weren't exactly in tip-top form. In fact, Maxi ended up with 15 points, didn't shoot very well. Ramsey had 33 in that game, and during the high school game, they had already known that Maxi was committed to Kentucky. Ramsey was still undecided, and now they're guarding each other here in a big-time Division I college basketball game. And Ramsey, the leading scorer for Texas Tech on the year with 15 points, only four so far. Chris Beard get him some play calls and get three in black going another floater a hard hard shot those Kentucky guards make with a high percentage Manuel quickly adds two more to his total and there are the point totals and other numbers for Maxi and Ramsey tonight now they're shooting very well but boy on this team for Kentucky at least and there's one inside tough layup that's no good the ball to Richards the fast break has been sort of a new weapon we've seen tonight we haven't seen too much for Kentucky 
all year. And that'll stay with the Wildcats. Got Daniel Nichols. quickly 18 points, Jimmy, sorry, on six rebounds. And Nick Richards has now got 10 rebounds and 11 points, another double-double. The, the, the ball deserves to go in for quickly because what you said earlier, how much time he has spent in that gym. And Tyler Hero kind of set the set the trend last year. And you go to Kentucky, you cannot hide. You, you either grow your game or you outgrow that Kentucky uniform and head out of there. Richards will take that from the foul line too strong. The other thing about quickly, he's every bit as good of a defender in the half court as Ashton Higgins is. Was not even close last year. They'll get Richards with a foul. That's what Clark wanted. The crowd is happy about it. And that'll be Nick Richards second. Texas Tech, of course, you can just see the size advantage that Kentucky enjoys. We've seen it with Baylor. We'll see it with West Virginia. They have Yanni Wetzel chose San Diego State over Texas Tech. Of course, Chiwa is a work in progress. They've had a couple of injuries, some transfers. They're kind of waiting for to find out what happens with Joel and Tombwe. Juco transfer who's twice been denied. A reconsideration waiver. So there were pieces that either have left or didn't come. Yeah. For Chris Beard. Chris Beard is, uh, he knows what fits with him. And if you're not a street dog and you don't want to get in the fight and you don't want to accept truth tellers from the coaching staff to you in individual meetings, you're not a fit here at Lubbock. Some guys are, some guys aren't. She with a freshman 54, seven footer back in the game, 260, one on one with Nick Richards. Quickly, that's a carry. John Calipari again, emptying out the corner and isolating quickly, Maxi at times. And if you're going to drive baseline against Texas Tech in this game, Kentucky closing it out. You drive the baseline and find the backside corner or the backside slot. If not, you will charge and turn that thing over. They replace. Chiwa on the offensive end. Clark driving on Richards, looking for another foul, won't get it there. Loose ball. Tech comes up with it. And a layup. It goes in. And down to seven is the lead. Kevin McCullar. Good to see him back after he banged his head on the floor in the first half. Chris Beard going right at Nick Richards right now, trying to get another foul. Richards has to defend, keep his body off of drives. Lazy turnover. That one off the hand of Tyrese Maxey. Try to catch it with one hand. The premier game in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Kentucky, Texas Tech, and Texas Tech deserves to be on this stage. A bucket here, and this place will go bonkers. Far good pass. pass. Richards off his feet. There's your bucket. Calipari not happy with the effort on the defensive end. And this crowd delighted to be back within five. Chris Beard will tell you that the formula for his success is the secret is in the dirt. What he means by that is not backing away when things get tough. Chris Clark in the middle of the floor is a 6'6 point guard. And Nick Richards just loses sight of his guy, gets above his offensive player. And Chris Clark just picks you apart as a passer, comes in averaging five assists a game in Big 12 play. And Chris Beard, the fight, the passion. Why this guy right now, to me, is one of the top three or four coaches in all of college basketball. Old school toughness, old school principles with new age communication skills, combines those two, Ravi, as well as anybody we have in the game. And he's got this student body, and Lubbock, Texas, fired up for basketball. Lost in the championship game to Virginia last year. There's one banner that says Final Four hanging here in the Raptors, and it's Beard told us earlier today, you know, you get there and then you just begin to worry, is this our only trip? Are we going to yeah. hang another banner at some point? And the culture of this place 
seems to indicate they probably will. Kentucky comes out with a baseline runner action. This usually results with a side isolation or a middle drive down the pipes of Hagens. Richards, free throw line, yep. got it. He shoots that 15-footer probably better than anybody else consistently on the floor for Kentucky. Down low, there's Chiwa. Threw it up, no good. Offensive rebound ripped away, but a foul is going to be called. I'm going to call it on Montgomery or Richards. And I think they called it on Nick Richards. Ravi Chiwa rolled down now. A violent roll down by 54 in black. Rolling down with a purpose. Nick Richards' third foul of this game. Jimmy, that's a big, big spot here. 12-43, 44, and he's out. Yeah, you saw it it's two minutes ago. I said Chris Beard is going right at Nick Richards, and he accomplished exactly what he wanted. Floater, that's good. Moretti off the screen. And Richards on the bench. So let's circle 12-40 on the clock and see what happens with Nick Richards sitting down. Sestina's three, oh, big one, and feels like when Calipari needs somebody of his rotation to step up, somebody different does, and maybe tonight it's Sestina. Texas Tech forced Kentucky to go weak on the ball screen action. Kentucky went weak and got the pop back, the step back, the clear three for Sestina. Edwards, three in and out, and here comes Maxi. Quickly. And we'll set it up with 20 to go. Ball screen up top, same play for Sestina. You're not going to switch it. Rescreen and rescreen for Hagens. Maxi, Sestina vacated. David Amorit is a really good three point shooter. And he hasn't gotten on track yet. Credit. Maxi for some of that. Into the lane, blow by, and they're going to get EJ Montgomery or Sestina with a foul. They call it on Sestina from behind. Ravi, both coaches now doing a lot of work in the middle part of the floor off of high ball screen actions. Texas Tech, they're rolling their ball screen defender to the rim. Kentucky right now popping theirs with Sestina. Intensity for Kentucky on the road back to back Saturdays. Man, there's the Sistina. So Kentucky's not going to roll their ball screen. They're going to pop their shooter again. What a game in Lubbock. All right, number one, Baylor. They're in Gainesville and taking on Florida. That is part of our Saturday showcase. Comes up after us, 8 o'clock Eastern time. You can see it on the app and watch it anywhere. It's part of the Big 12 SEC Challenge presented by Continental Tire. Of course, that game featuring a team that's number one on the road against a unranked non-conference opponent. Not been good for those number one teams. If Florida is able to knock off Baylor, they'll be the fourth team to take care of a number one on the road and not be ranked out of conference. All the qualifiers, but yeah. it's certainly in play tonight. And Florida, like Texas Tech in this game, either favored and Texas Tech was favored. ESPN BPI gave Texas Tech a 70% chance to win this. And the Gators at one point were favored to win at home against the number one team in Baylor. Well, they're going to have to have good offense if they're going to do it because Baylor is the real deal defensively, Rav. I had him against Arizona before Christmas. Mark Vidal and Davian Mitchell, two of the top 15, 20 defenders in all of college basketball on that Baylor team. Keon Brooks back in, so is Johnny Juzang, Nate Sestina. A little different lineup, obviously, for John Calipari. You got Maxi, Richards, and Montgomery, three starters sitting on the bench. Higgins to the baseline, blocked from behind. And well timed by Kyler Edwards. Seven point lead for the Wildcats. Just more than 10 minutes to play. Reset now with eight in the shot clock. Puller. 
too strong. Rebound offensive for Clark. We're going to get a foul on the floor. Call that on Johnny Juzang, who with his minutes has done not more than really pick up now his third foul. Chris Clark is a ball gatherer for Texas Tech. And he came from about eight feet away from where the ball was actually going to go to run it down. Richards back on the floor. you got to believe that Beard's going to want to go right at him, see if he can pick up another foul. Myas Ramsey knocks down the jumper. Chris Beard. I, I know I'm driving the point home. Keeping his offense in the middle part of the floor, dragging Nick Richards away from the rim with ball screen action right now. Quickly free, fires it off the backboard. That thing was halfway down. Sestina in traffic. Kick to Juzang, good shooter, knocks down a three. Emmanuel quickly, great shooter in his own right, made the extra pass. Yeah, I, I say the right pass. And it was the right play because Juzang had his feet set and a little bit of a rush from the slot. Terrific job by Kentucky to keep that ball popping and keeping it hot off an offensive rebound. Nothing's changing. There, there's, the, there's the isolation that Chris Beard wants. May not have been the shot he wanted, no. though, as Clark put up a long jumper. Yeah, he wants Clark being aggressive, man, going downhill. Nick Richards is not going to foul a jump shooter. He's grown with his discipline. Think about some of the big shots Kentucky's hit in this game. Nate Sestina, three. Johnny Juzang, three. But the three right before half. Huge. Hagan's good hands. Two on the shot clock. One, they won't get it off. That's a violation. Let's see if it was tipped out of bounds. Was that not tipped by a Texas Tech defender along that baseline? Well, both referees shaking their head no to the appeal. He's trying to make the hammer pass right. Oh, yeah, he definitely Clark, redirected yeah, definitely he did. That should have been Kentucky ball. May have also said that the shot clock violation had occurred there. And Kentucky did a good job to get over the top of that high horns, high double up action by Texas Tech. Ready, tough pass, blind pass. And he and Holyfield were not on the same page. He wanted Holyfield to keep cutting, and Holyfield yeah. didn't. Yeah, that, that great, great analysis by you, Ravi, because it was the cut of Holyfield that wasn't coming rim hard. He was kind of running to the side of the backboard instead of right to the front of the rim where Moretti was expecting him to be. See how we're both learning from ah, each just, other? Yeah, in sync. Yeah. Captain Cooperative. Yeah, the, <laughs> the things I've learned from you. <laughs> That's the title of maybe my next book. <laughs> That'll be found in a different section. <laughs> oh, what a bad pass by Higgins. Ramsey, tough shot blocked by Maxey and now deflected out of bounds. Frustration for Tobias Ramsey. I think the thing that maybe doesn't get appreciated about Kentucky when you figure, you know, freshmen, superstar, five-star guys, their defense. The three guards can all man up against the opponent's best player. Quickly, yeah, they, Hagens, and Maxey. Yeah, that's they, a luxury. And, and the numbers back it up. Uh, uh, opponents only getting 29% from the three-point line on Kentucky because Kentucky just check your breath defensively outside that three-point line with pressure. Top shot quickly. He's going to get a foul, and he'll go to the free-throw line, shoot two. Kentucky so good, man, at emptying that corner and attacking their guards. Hugs all around for Emmanuel quickly. He'll shoot two, 7.44 to go, and a chance to increase the lead to 10. Thank you. All right, Allison, thank you very much. Hey, the Mike Slive Foundation will hope and help to eradicate prostate cancer through raising public awareness and research funding in memory of the former commissioner, Mike Slive. Stats on the prostate cancer, one in nine men diagnosed with it. It claims a life every 20 minutes. You can go to MikeSlyFoundation.org to learn more. Whatever that cancer word affects all of us. Let me take you inside these two guys right here. John Calipari, 
when he found out my mother-in-law had a cancerous brain tumor about six years ago, said, send me your number. I want to call and talk to her. And he did for about 10 minutes and just completely changed the outlook for uh, my mother-in-law in terms of her fight in that. And the same thing with Chris Beard. This year, after they knocked off number one Louisville, he found out the next day that my dad's battling liver cancer and sent me a text and said, send me your dad's number. I want to call him. And just for those kind of guys at that level, to take the time to be a real guy and care about others, that's a tremendous, tremendous thing for my family. No question. Tremendous. And it's great when guys in those positions know the responsibilities that come with those positions yep. beyond just coaching. Quickly, that's a walk. Kentucky just doesn't turn the ball over right now. They've had some unforced three or four turnovers in this game. Footwork has not been clean, allowing Texas Tech to hang in. What right now, Kentucky could be up 13, 14 points. 14th turnover of the game, Texas Tech. Been very good with the ball, only seven. So a nine point advantage, seven minutes to go. Coach Calipari this week was talking about how his team doesn't yet know exactly how to finish a game. You got a nine point lead, instead of growing it to 20, it tends to shrink to about four or five. And is that a skill? Already thought he was fouled. Will they get he quickly? Was. They will. Is that an art to kind of close out games when yeah. you have a lead? Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a maturity process and a toughness process that Kentucky is getting better at. Now, they a severe test last Saturday in Bud Walton Arena when Cal got ejected for the player-driven team to step forward and say, Coach, we've got this. And this thing is far, far from over here in Lubbock. And those Kentucky guards have to take care of that basketball Defend without fouling. Kentucky was so good in the first half of doing that. It has been 54 games since a team came in here out of conference and won at United Supermarkets Arena. This is obviously the biggest challenge that they've had in those 54 games. Speaking of LSU, they win again today. <laughs> is their sixth game in a row, right, Ravi, that they've won by... Four points or less. Yeah, they've won their last six games by a total of 15 points. Crowd sense is big moment in the game. Richards, baseline, boy. They have silenced that crowd every time the crowd has tried to help Texas Tech. You talk about a big boy possession on the road by Kentucky. First of all, to not turn it over when Texas Tech was trying to double them up early in the possession, and then to punch the paint but not charge and find the kick out. Clark working hard down low on Sestina. Tough play and save. Already good hustle. Drives on Higgins and lost it. And now they're going to get the foul on Davide Moretti. At the end of that last possession by Kentucky, you're going to see a drive. And then off of that drive, Nick Richards isn't going to stay at, at, attracted to the rim. He's going to stay at that 15-foot mark, playing out of the extended dunker spot. There's the drive. He steps back to about the 16, 17-foot mark. Bam, I'm telling you. He consistently knocks down that shot. John Calipari putting him in the dunker spot where he can get on the offensive glass or knock down the step back 16 footer. Where is Nick Richards in the SEC player of the year conversation? He is right there at the top, Ravi. When you consider his numbers and what he's doing, I had uh, Reggie Perry in that conversation as well. After today's performance, Nick Richards won, Reggie Perry two, the kid from Mississippi State. What Richards has done that Perry has not been able to do is be consistent yes. night in and night out. Yes, we talked about consistency earlier this week. You know how I feel about that. I do. You're all about it. <laughs> My man is all about consistency. That's too strong. Offensive rebound, good. Moretti, tough pass down low. Good extra pass and the foul on Sestina from behind. Yeah, the, the speed in this game has bothered Moretti just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he can't do much off the balance, and the, the Kentucky closeouts are so fast with high hands, throwing him out of rhythm. Did a good job just to keep the ball moving that possession, did Moretti. Holyfield, the 70% free throw shooter. Goes to the line for two, knocks down the first. Not Wednesday, you'll be able to see Coach Cal and Kentucky one more time. They host Vanderbilt at Rupp Arena.
This has been a one-sided rivalry the last seven years. They've won six straight, nine of ten. 6.30 Eastern Time, 5.30 Central. It's on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One of two. Lead is seven, five minutes to go. Texas Tech has defended in this game without foul. And still only five team fouls for Texas Tech. Texas Tech's three-point shooting has been a source of frustration. Two of 15 in the game today. Maxi step back, floater no good. And a chance to cut into this seven-point lead. It's what this crowd is waiting for. Moretti fires a three. He hits the net. Was it a two or a three? Whichever it was, he got it in and out of the shot pocket about a half of a second. And a lead down to four, and again, the crowd back on its feet. All 15,000 of them. Cal keeping it simple. The baseline runner action, if you make a mistake, that's exactly what happens. Richards may be hurt, though. He's grabbing that shin of his, and this may be an enormous story in this game. Hagen's found him. He was open on the baseline. I think he smacked his leg on the the goal at the end of that play. I heard him say this guy's my, my shin, which is probably good news. If you make a mistake and you get high and unattached to Nick Richards, they're going to slip it. And right, I, I don't know. No, I don't, I don't know think he ever got yeah. to the stanchion. Right, right there. Yeah, yeah, knee on shin. Cal keeping his offense simple, Ravi, on the road in a, in a hot building. That baseline runner action, if you make a mistake, they're going to slip the big. And if you don't extend, then you obviously can give up a pro 15-foot jump shot. It's hard to defend, simple action, and Cal's going to stay with it. Richards 4 of 5 from the free throw line. That was two. Cool moment. It looked like Kevin McCullough, who may have inadvertently hit his shin with his knee just shook his hand after the free throw went in no good for Richards there five-point game Chris Beard's going ball screen up top there it is already can't do much off of it he keeps his dribble well Great done pass. yes already with the pass and the big assist Holyfield, the lead is down to three. A good call by Chris Beard to get Moretti in a ball screen on the move. Moretti did a terrific job, Ravi, to keep his dribble alive. Look at this. Turnover. Three on two. Moretti. Hagens came back. What a play. Ashton Hagens on the defensive end to deflect it away. What fight by Ashton Hagens to not give up on the play from behind. And that's how you win hard games on the road, making plays in the dirt. And that was one of them by Ashton Hagens. So the three-point lead could have been down to one. We'll see where it is after this possession. Richards wants it badly with Moretti on him. Quickly threw it up to him. Sestina follows no good. And another run out for the Red Raiders. Richards with the big block. They call goaltending on that play. It was not goaltending. It didn't appear to be to me. Did it hit yeah. the backboard? I think it did. It's not reviewable to the two-minute mark. Nick Richards is just in a full-out sprint. Does the ball get on the backboard before Richards gets to it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. What a call. Well done by Joe DeRosa. Trailing the play right there. Ball off backboard. Got to leave it alone. Great call. What a game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire for what you do. All right, Ali, thank you very much. Great game here, and we mentioned this earlier, but here it is graphically. When they lead by 10 under John Calipari, Kentucky has won 274 of the 281 games in that situation. They've only lost seven, and they are being pushed hard here by Chris Beard's Texas Tech team. Historically, Chris Beard in close games with four minutes or less to go, they become a downhill driving team trying to get to the free throw line. Kentucky better lock in on their next defensive possession, guarding the ball. 
Richards and Holyfield battling against each other. Chris Beard with that wry smile they call the foul on Holyfield. And that sends Richards, who's four of six from the free throw line today, to shoot two. We're in the bonus on both sides. Two timeouts for Kentucky left, two for Texas Tech. And Rabbi, I, I think both teams, I think Calipari and Chris Beard both have the philosophy in the late close games. You're not going to win at shooting jump shots. You drive that ball and you get on the offensive glass and you get dirty points. 17 points, 11 rebounds for Nick Richards. He may wave it off. Yeah, Moretti saw it too. He pointed it too quickly, got into the lane. That cost you a point. And remember that with 2.50 to go. I'll be shocked if this is a jump shot call. Yep. It's not. No, it's they're going to get Hagen's yeah. shot. That, that's Chris Beard now. I'm telling you, you go back and watch him, even in his days at Little Rock in close ball games. This guy's driving the ball between the pipes. He ain't messing around with jump shots and finesse stuff. He's going to ball screen you and drive you, and at worst, get themselves to the free throw line. This kid here is automatic. 92% free throw shooter. Watch him, Rab. He doesn't guard himself. Just very quick, efficient stroke. Keeps it very similar to his jump shot. Doesn't stare down the rim. Doesn't guard himself at the free throw line like I think a lot of players make a mistake doing. What an effort by the Red Raiders. And again, the inability of Kentucky with a double-digit lead to put a team away. We got a brand new ball game with 2.40 to go, tied at 63. Expect more possessions of Moretti driving the ball because of that right there. It's an automatic two points when he gets to the line. Nearly a travel on Maxi. Beard was helping the referees call it. Tyrese Maxi, three, no good. Battle for the offensive rebound. Who is it? It's going to be Kentucky. And hustle points for Nick Richards. What in the world was Tyrese Maxey thinking? You come down and run no offense, ran no offense, and jumped up and shot a distance three, and John Calipari lit him up. Drive the stinking ball, you know? Exactly what his lips said. He's doing it there. We have contact and a charge on Maxey. Calipari's pointing to Hagen and said, you got to have the ball in your hands. Cal again, he, he empties out the corner. Nick Richards comes to the high side, kind of a ghost ball screen. And David Moretti, not a factor the first 30 minutes of the game, a big factor right now, 25 in black. Sure has been, quick is all over him. Fade away, short. Traffic rebound and they run. Hagens nearly lost it. He's trapped in the corner, but gets it to Richards. And they'll reset with 20. Yeah, get the ball into Hagens' hands. That's your playmaker. John Calipari is going to flatten out the floor, isolate Hagens, let him go to work. One on one isolation in front of Kentucky's bench. Quickly three. Too strong and a great box out by Holyfield. Red Raiders looking for their first lead of the second half. This will be a drive the ball play by Texas Tech. It is money in this situation for Chris Beard. Edwards with a switch, Maxi. Take two. Three pointer. Off and out of bounds. That, that's not Texas Tech closing out games. The ball got stuck. It never got moved. It never got given up by Edwards. And Chris Beard saying, drive the ball. A couple of empty possessions for yeah. each team here. Coach Cal Perry wants to talk it over with a minute and 11 to go. The last three Kentucky possessions, Ravi, have not been good. The building's hot. The pressure's on in Kentucky. The last three possessions, there's a mistake made by Quickly, which erased the point. And then Ashton Hagens with a foul, Moretti getting downhill. And then the foul again. It's a terrific defensive play by Moretti, playing lower than the offensive player was. And John Calipari and his Kentucky team finds himself once again in a two-fisted fight on the road on a Saturday evening. No doubt about it. And they do cite every road game they play as 
a building block experience for these kids, but this environment is a little different today, a little more unique for them in the blackout game in which tickets Never were mind. selling for $395. Think about that. Most expensive ticket I was told in the world today for a sporting event yeah. in Lubbock, Texas. Not since the Paul McCartney concert back in 2014 did this building get such a price for a ticket. And uh, money well spent. Tied with a minute five to play. It's normally a Hagen's play for Calipari out this time out. Maxi, way off. And a fourth empty possession for Kentucky. And a force by Maxi trying to make something out of nothing. Moretti's got Richards on him. And so this match, he's going to pull it out. What's Chris Beard? He's going to open the floor, spread it out, let Moretti go to work. Does he bring a ball screen up or not? No. Jumper. Way off. And now Kentucky has the ball and about two second difference. Not stopping Higgins to Richards. Can't get it to go. We'll get a foul and he'll go to the free throw line. Boy, does Ashton Higgins force the action. As fast as Ashton Higgins is bringing that ball in a crowd, Nick Richards is out in front of the play. A seven footer, Ravi, to run with this type of speed to get in front of the play and force the foul right there by Moretti coming underneath Nick Richards. That is absolutely the right call. Nick Richards goes up, he has that space, and Moretti comes underneath him. And now Nick Richards back on that free throw line. Remember the play before the half, I said, remember it in the late close game. The three point shot that was thrown in by Kentucky, huge in this ball game. Half court buzzer beater at the half by Quickly, and Richards misses his third free throw of the night. It was short. His legs were not into that shot. Well, given the shin injury that he suffered, he came down on the body of Moretti. That may have affected him as well. A little past 7 in the east. I should say here in the central time zone. Set for our 8 o'clock start. Let's go back to Allison. And the number one team in the country, Baylor, takes their top ranking on the road for the first time to Florida, where they'll face Kerry Blackshear Jr. and the Gators. Tip off in just under five minutes. You got a heck of a finish, though, first over in Lubbock. Guys, back to you. Sure do, Allison. Thank you very much. This was, if you didn't see it, the halftime buzzer beater from Quickly. Yeah, with 1.6, Emmanuel Quickly knows he's got time for one bounce. And again, the difficulty of going to his left and getting the ball back on the right side of his body. And it was money. And then John Calipari clear with his communication, get his guys lined up to get some type of a banana cut action going towards the rim. And Quickly with a huge shot. And now Nick Richards cannot leave this thing short. Quickly also with the lane violation on the free yeah, throw. He did. Should be ahead by a point as Richards takes the second of two after missing the first. Chris Beard has a timeout. Will he play it or just let Moretti try to get downhill? Edge there by Richards to have him pick up the dribble. There's a collision trying to blow up the screen and they're going to get Hagens. Ravi, what a job. A violent cut by Moretti to try to go to get the dribble handoff. And Ashton Hagens, as good as anyone in college ball, at blowing up dribble handoff to right here. Just a little bit behind the play with the reach in. And the hard cut by Moretti gets one of the top 10 free throw shooters in all of college ball on the line with 18 seconds to go. Davide Moretti. They're saying they're going to give the foul that was wow. contact made on Holyfield. Wow. Chris Beard is completely up in arms about this. They're saying Hagen's fouled Holyfield right. with the body, I guess, trying to blow up the dribble handoff. And the difference there is Holyfield goes to the free throw line. His free throw shooting percentage, 70%. Moretti over 90%. And they may... Go to the monitor. That's what Chris Beard is hoping they would do. Yeah, I think if he fouled Moretti first on the arm and then the body. There's the foul on Moretti first and then the blow up of the body. There's a bam bam play, yeah. but after communicating it out, the right guy gets to the line. Oh, 
How about Would you that? believe it? A 90 plus percent free throw shooter missed the first. I wonder, you know, did the did the extra time to figure it out hurt him a little bit? And this kid's 92 percent. Yeah. And John Calipari has one timeout to use if he wants to. Knocks that one down to tie it up with 18 seconds to go. It's actually, yeah. Chris Beard, who said, let's talk this over defensively. Texas Tech with a timeout. All right, so what are you uh, drawing up here for Kentucky? Well, what's worked for Kentucky in this game has been what uh, John Calipari has done all year. It's it's getting that thing up on the glass, Ravi, in time for an offensive rebound. And the bigs of Kentucky, they, they, they've got to go full force right now. But it's all going to start with Ashton Hagens. His point guard is setting right there to his right shoulder. And John Calipari is going to be very clear how he wants to get this ball in and where he wants to go with it. And Kentucky, all they have to do is get themselves to the free throw line right now. Both coaches have been so good, so good the last four minutes, not settling for jump shots, driving the ball, getting to the line, playing muscle ball at the power part of the floor. There's no reason for Kentucky not to try to finish this game out with that same formula. They've had Nick Richards come through for them, but over the course of the season, Maxey hit a big shot against Michigan State early, quickly has hit a number of big shots late in games, and obviously late in the first half here. So the options create themselves if it goes up on the glass, but given the way that he shot, wouldn't shock me if quickly ends up with the ball in his hands at the buzzer. Yeah, and if you're Chris Beard, you can't say it enough. The first shot probably won't beat us. Don't let the second shot. Every black jersey has to go hit first when Kentucky releases that first shot. If you are Kentucky, you're going downhill. Does John Calipari involve a ball screen and bring a second defender into the play? Or does he trust Ashton Hagens to just go one-on-one -on -one and get between the pipes? The concern is Nick Richard just sitting in that dunker spot on the left side of the block. If you come off of Nick Richards, he's an offensive rebound waiting to happen. It's quickly, it's long, and it's Texas Tech with the board with three seconds to go. Two seconds from Moretti. Will go to overtime. They got the ball to quickly in the shot they wanted, and then hope Richards could get the rebound. He couldn't, and then Moretti had a chance. But we're going to go to an overtime. Yeah, John Calipari drove the ball knowing that Texas Tech defensively, they converged hard on the ball. So he had a, I think it's a nice little flare screen on the backside. There's a hard drive of the pipes. I thought Hagens maybe could have kept it now and gotten all the way to the rim. They, they go back and look at this play. But it, it just the, the play call by Calipari, he trusted his gut. Felt like maybe the, the traffic around the rim would be too much. So he runs the play for the backside yep. and we go to overtime. Already shot wasn't close, and it really wasn't contested. We'll go to overtime, but first we send it back to Allison in the studio. Hey, Ravi, thanks so much. A quick reminder for fans looking for Baylor at Florida. That game has just tipped off, and you can find it over on ESPN News. It will move over to ESPN here as soon as you guys go final in Lubbock. Ravi? All right, Allie, thank you very much. If you're curious about foul trouble here as we head to the overtime, several Kentucky players, three fouls each on Hagens, Maxi, Sestina, and Jusang. On the other side, the three foul guys are Holyfield, Moretti, and Ramsey. Rabbi, we said it early. This is going to be a long, emotional journey in this building today. We're going to go five more minutes beyond that long, emotional journey. Both coaches have utilized their bench as well. Been a draining game. So now it becomes a toughness game, a mental toughness game. Chris Beard has built this program on that four to one ratio. Four parts, mental toughness is more important than the, than, than the actual talent or the skill level that you're playing with. Neither team, in my estimation, is gonna flinch in this overtime period. That's not how their coaches are wired. That's not how these young men are wired. What a statement by Chris Beard's Red Raiders, though. They were down 10. They yeah. battled all the way back. And there is that non-conference 54 straight wins on this floor that Texas Tech is trying to protect. Already open over Richards. High Archer. Richards is vacated, so the chance for Texas Tech to pick up that rebound. And they're going to say that's off of Kentucky. 
It has been a steady dose of Dragon four and white away from the basket, forcing him to help cover ball screen situations by Texas Tech. Clark out, Moretti's really become the point guard out there. And throws cross court, open three. Too strong and too long. Foul on the floor. Shot from the corner from Kevin McCullough was way off. He's about a 20% three point field goal shooter. Only his 15th attempt this season. He's now made four of them. Nick Richards back to the line, six out of nine in this ball game so far. Remember at the end of the uh, of the regulation, he missed one and he was short with it. He's got to keep his legs involved in this free throw right now. He's worked extremely hard the last couple of years. An incredible atmosphere in a game that these fans have been waiting for since the Big 12 SEC Challenge teams were announced. 15,000 here, and Nick Richards knocks in another one. He's got 19 points to go with his 12 rebounds. And probably the first time in Nick Richards' career, he wants to be fouled in this type of situation. He probably would have kind of ran and backed away from this moment the first two years. Not anymore. Tyra Lewis, Alabama, we gave you the update. They hang on and win, so the Big 12 SEC Challenge, four up for each team in each conference. Sprint out ball screen in the middle part of the floor. Now it's Sestina they're going to pick on. Shannon, they dared him in the first half. He made a couple. Not there. Now quickly in Ramsey. Tough shot. Contested. Blocked. Again, the interchangeable defensive parts for Kentucky, whether it's Pagans or Quickly and Maxey, show themselves here late in this, in this contest. Just a tremendous one-on-one -on -one defensive play by Quickly to be the second guy off the floor, but the long extension to get in front of the ball as a defender. Too easy yeah. for Richards, and he gets the bucket. Hagen saw him, and he's playing to that crowd. And he'll go to the free throw line. He is the unquestioned leader of this team today. Watch the extension by Quickly to begin with. Quickly, again, fights over the ball screen, doesn't give up on it, and then he goes in front of the ball, Ravi, to avoid any contact. Very well done. And there's John Calipari again, keeping the offense simple. You're using Sestina on one side, Richards on the other as the, as the screeners. And if you make a mistake in that situation, it's an automatic slip for Richards to the rim. Huge game for Nick yeah, Richards. Man. His 23rd point to go with his 13 rebounds. And he is 9 of 12 from the free throw line. Texas Tech needs points. Tough shot there and a good one. Tyler Edwards. Not a lot of resistance by that Kentucky defense. Force it weak, but you got to force weak and get him at least outside the lane. Richards double teamed. They left quickly open for a second. Maxi will try to drive. Nate Sestina, three. Right on line. Nate Sestina, his second big three of the game. The guy that came in, Cal, said, I think his confidence is not what it was over the last month. Nate Sestina does a great job of sprinting, sprinting to the top of the key. Oh, how about the answer? That's a two. But Kyler Edwards has knocked down his last two shots. Off assignment for Holyfield. He gets Richards quickly off the glass. Charge, no basket. You've got to stop and play off two feet against Texas Tech. Texas Tech goal in this game is a draw five charges. They're beyond that number. Quickly plays off two feet, but he's still floating, Ravi. The momentum, the momentum is what you're concerned with. And quickly with a mistake. Edwards made the last two. He got stuck in the air. He made a big mistake on that one. And a turnover. 
Oh, Hagens gets fancy and gets blocked. Great effort by Holyfield. And a foul. That'll send to the line Terrence Shannon Jr. What is Ashton Hagens doing? Nope. You're on the road in overtime up four. You're forcing the action when there's nowhere to go with the basketball. And reading the numbers, Hagens doesn't pass the test. Been so good in so many plays, but boy, time, score, momentum dictate what you do as a point guard. Calipari coaching him up. Up by four on the road. 18 turnovers in this game for Kentucky. Is that more a byproduct of Kentucky or Texas Tech's defense? A little bit of both. K Kentucky's had five or six unforced turnovers. Just trying to make a play too fast, traveling on an isolation with an emptied out corner, forcing the ball into action. If you just watch one game of Texas Tech, you know they sprint, man. They sprint to help for those charges to be taken. Texas Tech has scored 23 points off of those turnovers. Now Shannon Jr. to the free throw line. First one, good. Team that shoots 75% from the stripe. Shannon Jr., one of the better shooters on the team at 83%. Like that, it's a two-point game. What is the conversation about? He keeps the cow is putting up four fingers saying four fouls. Kentucky feels like Maxi only has four, pers four personals. And the official book now is being questioned. So that's the four fingers from Calipari, and the officials try to iron out. That's Joe DeRosa, Antonio Petty. George. So again, is it four fouls on? Yes, it is only four. Yeah, that's why you that's why you keep your own account on that bench, man. And could be critical. Yeah. Four only has four fouls and not five. Okay. So again, no. terrific job by Calipari staff to be on top of that. And Tyrese Maxey with four fouls. Yeah, you may have heard through the microphone, four only has four, but four actually only has three fouls. Yeah. Nick Richards, the official then looked back to us and held up three fingers. Maxi has four fouls. Richards has Richard three. Has three. Two-point game. Keep it a downhill game if you're Kentucky. Sestina, and he's going to get charged. He slid and he used that big body to try to set a screen, but instead he gets called. Trying to free quickly up. And Sestina right there on the right side. Just enough of a lean. I, I thought he got his feet set, but just enough of a nudge for Joe DeRosa right there. Man, that's a hard call to go against Kentucky. In an era of flops. Shannon Jr. definitely had contact made. Yeah, there was. But then there may have been a little bit of extra sauce on the dive. That one out of bounds, and it's off of Texas Tech. How about the play of Ashton Higgins? My goodness. You're trying to run a sprint out ball screen and get the guy that Higgins is defending downhill, and Higgins has nothing to do with it. Again, he plays low, and his hands play lower. Outstanding by Ashton Higgins. Scoring has become very difficult in the overtime. Sestina will launch. No good. He's made a couple of threes today, but not there. An empty trip for the Wildcats. Right, I just don't think that's the first shot that Calipari wants. He wants that ball in the paint.
Get that thing on the offensive glass. Hagen's hands tips it again to Maxi. Loose ball. Who's going to get it? Richards was on oh, the was other no, side of the court. There was no possession, Ravi. That ball was being tipped. There was no possession by Kentucky. Nobody ever actually had no, the they possession. Did not. They did not. This ball just becomes a, a hot mess being tipped around. Did you make the argument that Maxie was dribbling it there? I don't no. think so. No, that, 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 those are tip balls. That should be Kentucky ball. I don't think you can say that they had ever had clean possession once that thing started being batted around. I would agree. The only time it looked possible was when Maxie twice got hands on it to dribble. But that seemed like it was three, or, three or four bats ago. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a huge call to be made by Joe DeRozan, Antonio Petty, and Darren George. So does anybody have possession? possession? Right, there's yeah, possession. I but, think that is possession. But now it becomes a loose ball again. That ball is being batted around, tapped around. <laughs> Red Raider ball. Downhill drive, tough shot, foul, Sestina. That'll send Shannon Jr., your 83% free throw shooter, to the line. If you're Kentucky, you fouled a guy that was outside the lane, actually driving the ball away from the rim. And Nate Sestina gets his body involved and impacts it too much. And picks up his fifth foul, so he's fouled out of the game. Boy, just where you are on the floor, Shannon is going, he's outside the lane. If he makes that shot, so be it. But you have to understand where you are and just enough contact for the, the foul to be called. And you lose that three-point weapon of Sestina. It certainly wasn't a hard foul, but it was enough. You can't say enough about what Chris Beard has done, given how good the team was last year and what they lost. You're looking at a Texas Tech team that had six players gone from that national title runner-up game, seven freshmen, nine newcomers. And they are toe-to-toe -to -toe here with the Cats. Yeah, and, and the, the impressive part to me is how good they are defensively again because they lost Matt Mooney, an all-Big 12 defender, Jarrett Culver, a terrific yeah. defender, and Tariq Owens, 92 blocks last year. But the culture, the DNA, the formula, all those things stay consistent with Chris Beard. And here we go again. John Calipari has two timeouts. This is Ashton Hagen's time to drive downhill and get Nick Richards a chance on the offensive glass at the end of the play. Instead, it's Maxey with the ball in his hands, and 15 now. Zero has it. Get the mismatch. Spread the floor and let Hagen's go to work. Quickly, contact, foul. He'll go to the free throw line. And Ravi's just, it's good ball movement by Kentucky. They got to the third pass, which created a defensive closeout on a driver like quickly. Very, very good ball movement to keep it popping and finally get the closeout angle they want. And now Emmanuel quickly. 92% free throw shooter, 91-8. They got the closeout. He has historically this season closed his eyes before each free throw. I asked him the other day, what, what do you visualize? He said, I'm really just trying to calm myself down. I base it upon how the building feels to me. Am I being sped up in my mind, just trying to calm myself down? Visualizes a lot of plays in the locker room before the game, but right now, just he's being guarded by a slow two shot, a uh, shoe tie of yeah, Shannon. Shannon right? certainly yeah. took his time, tried to slow him down with his tying of his shoes. Didn't work on the first one from quickly. What do you see when you close your eyes in a spot like that? What do I see if uh -huh. I were to close my eyes? Yeah. I see the ball going through the basket. There you go. How about you? Depends on the day. Sometimes kombucha. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> well done by quickly, man. Just the, the toughness to step up and make free throws. Hagen's hands again right there with the deflection. I would not go at Hagen's guy anymore. 
Someone else has to make a play because Higgins is just blowing it up. Already got by quickly. A little dump off and a layup is good. And a foul on McCuller. He'll go to the line and try to give Tech the lead. Another cut from the corner by Texas Tech in their offense. It starts with a paint punch and a good job to cut from the corner. Tyrese Maxey, I believe, fell asleep and started ball watching. Texas Tech has back cut the ball watch four or five times in this game. McCuller a 60% free throw shooter, missed it. Tech had it and retains it. And they will talk it over. Calipari out there. Talking with Maxi and Texas Tech in a tie game. We'll have the ball with 25 seconds to go on the game clock, 18 on the shot clock. What an effort by the Red Raiders here. Down 10 at one point in this game. The game begins when that ball is on the glass. And a missed free throw opportunity, and Maxi does not step in hard in front of Kevin McCuller. He's responsible for the box off on the free throw shooter. If you go back and look at it again, he doesn't come in and step in front of McCuller till the very end. Right there, man. You've got to get your shoulders in front of 15 in black. Maxi doesn't do it, allows McCuller to stay involved in the play. And a huge missed box off by Kentucky. Isn't it amazing how in a game like this, in a yes. moment like this, that that will get exposed? Yes. All right, we'll take our time out here, send it back to Allison in the studio. Allie? Over on ESPN News, Florida trying to get their first ever regular season win over a number one ranked team. That game underway, Florida with a two point lead over Baylor. Shaping up to be a heck of a finish there in Lubbock. Ravi, back to you. Certainly is. You talk about culture, identity, what Texas Tech under Chris Beard has done, and it was a motivated fan base to begin with. I mean, their football program always gets great crowds. Of course, Mahomes played here. He's going to the Super Bowl. Their baseball team is ranked third in the preseason poll going in, and this place, this ticket is hard to get. He alluded to the fact that it's Kentucky sellout crowd, but we had a sellout crowd when Bethune Cookman came in. The point was, it's harder to sell that out, and they did. This is an easy game to sell out. Yeah, it is, and that's that's what uh, Chris Beard has built. John Calipari is used to this. They go on the road. It's hat day, cap day, T-shirt day, hard hat day, whatever. And this is common stuff for Kentucky on the road. If you're Chris Beard right now, you just stay to your culture. You stayed your culture, and I said it with four minutes to go in the game. His culture has been as a head coach to drive the ball and get big boy points at the power part of the floor. Nothing finesse in this program. There's nothing finesse with 18 seconds to go on Texas Tech shot clock right now. This they was are, this was free beer day. This was this was about tailgate that. day. Yes. They were willing to give food, beer to uh, the fans that were obviously of age. But that's how big this game was and. You saw Chris Beard and I think it was Jamias Ramsey get on social media trying to encourage folks to come out. Gave a great reason, 65 degrees here today. And man, have they been loud the entire game. So they're checking the clock and the time. Clock starts there. And they go to 20 on an offensive rebound. Beard called it. It seems to be fairly accurate. It's awfully close, but you want to get it. If it's 25.6, get it to 25.6. If it's 25.2, get it to there. It's the beauty of being, you know, 18 to 22. You can have that energy through overtime like these guys do. <laughs> I can see Dykes bailing on the dinner tonight. He's just shutting it down, toes up, as soon as we hit the hotel. It has been, I'll say it again, a long emotional journey for both teams in this building. The game clock begins on a touch of the ball right there. The game clock has to begin. And then once Texas Tech gets possession right there, the shot clock goes to 20. Up top, Frank and Chris, Chris Beard calling, calling timeout. timeout. And it's when was the timeout granted is what they're going to be looking at. And it says uh, they're going to stay at 25.4 and 18 on the shot clock. I, I, I think they've got their spot on. Boy, if you're Kentucky right now, Ravi, you have to stay between your guy and the basket. You've been back cut in this game five or six times. You cannot be back cut again. 
So you take the back cuts away by just staying position defense between your guy and the basket. If you're Texas Tech, what have you done? It's been David Moretti making plays off the bounce in the middle part of the floor. Terrific pass he made to McCullough, the drop off, which led to the tie game. They're going to go double up Horns action and just isolate Shannon on a drive. Nearly lost it. He's clearly one sided player, goes to his left. Now he cuts to the right, throws it up. Tough shot. Richards in traffic, had it, lost it. We're going to get a foul on the floor, and Nick Richards is going to go shoot free throws. How about the defense by E.J. Montgomery? To erase the drive and then stay involved defensively and force a lefty to go right. E.J. Montgomery defensively, tremendous right here. Squares him up, takes away the left paw, and forces him to his right. Goes straight up and down as well as you can play on-ball defense, trying to close out a game by Montgomery. Great point for a guy that clearly is favored his left side. He went into no man's land and had to throw it back across his body. So Richards, who has been outstanding today from the free throw line, 9 of 12. 20 points, 13 and 4 blocks. He's the first since Anthony Davis back in 2012. And the season of Nick Richards just continues to get better and better. Yeah, he's, he's jumped right up there to the front for SEC Player of the Year. And the growth of this kid, and again, don't leave it short. Use your legs. See the ball go in. I'll say it again. The last two years, Nick Richards would not even maybe want to be in the game right now. Now not only does he want to be in the game, he wants the ball on the free throw line, shooting into a student section on the road. What growth. Knocked them both down. Two-point lead, 10 seconds. Be a high flat ball screen to get Moretti trying to go downhill more. Oh man, the throwback's there. The drive, lost it. One second left to go. They will look at it. I know they made a call. And you made a mistake going at Ashton Hagens if you're Texas Tech. You cannot go at this kid trying to close out a game defensively. He blows up action better than anybody in college basketball, Ravi, and he primarily does it without fouling. Watch Ashton Hagen try it here. To get off that high flat ball screen, keep his feet alive, to play low with low hands, oh. and they're reaching at the end. To not foul and to play from behind the play defensively. A Moretti. thing of beauty, it's, it's a, right there. Yeah. As soon as Moretti showed that thing and got the ball outside of his body space, it allowed Hagens to come in from behind. And Moretti's foot was out of bounds, and he came back in and was the first to touch it. I think that's got to be Kentucky basketball. Watch Moretti. Watch his right foot out right of bounds there. there. Yeah, that's Kentucky ball. He touched the ball with his right foot out of bounds. The play by Hagens to fight over the ball right, right there. But the play by Hagen to fight over the ball screen up top and get back in the play, man, that's winning basketball on the road, on the defensive end of the court. How good is he? You put your most competitive dudes on the floor to close out games regardless of their position. Ashton Hagen's is number one for John Calipari. And he's only got six points in this game. He's got seven assists, and yet his impact yes. on the game has been huge. They throw it up to Richards, and that'll do it. Kentucky gets the win on the road in overtime, and it ends that 54-game win streak in the non-conference here at the United Supermarkets Arena. Nice job, my friend. As always, Ravi. For Jimmy Dykes, I'm Carl Ravich, our entire crew here. What